Okay, welcome back for exercises 32, 33, 34, and 35 uh, from the Java MOOC uh, week two. So let's get started. Um, so let's take a look at exercise 32. And it says, create a program that calculates the sum 1, 2, 3, n, where n is a number entered by the user. Now, this is very, very similar to the previous problems that we had done. Um, thing to look at for this type of problem is we have a sequence. So anytime you have a sequence, you're going to have a loop of some sort. Okay, so, but also in this particular problem, you have to look at what you're trying to solve for. In this case, you're looking at trying to solve for the sum. Okay, so we want to figure out the sum of all of these numbers. So that'll help us like kind of figure out, you know, what we're trying, what we want to calculate here. So I'm going to go back to, again, I'm using Repolit, and I'm going to undo, delete that, and I'm going to import uh, Java util.scanner because I'm going to be using the scanner class to get keyboard input. And let's get started. Um, so we're going to start out, so we're, we're looking at the set of, sum of a set of numbers. So I'm going to go int number, to keep it consistent with what we did before, number equals one. And if you recall, I just said we're looking to find the sum. Now, when the program starts, we don't know the sum, but we do know it's going to start at zero. So it just makes logical sense. Okay. And then we need to ask the user um, what number until. Um, just real quick, you notice here the underline is green. It says the value of the local variable is not used. So it's not a syntax error. The program will run, but we haven't done anything with these. It's just kind of let you know, hey, you, you created these, but you're not using them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print out system.out.println until, actually, until what? Because that's what it has there. Actually, I'm going to change that to print so it doesn't go to the next line. And then I'm going to say int max because we're looking for the maximum number. And we're going to go integer dot parse int and then Ooh, I haven't done this yet. One second. Reader dot next. I always forget this one. Next line. And so I have to make a reader. And so scanner, it's a scanner object. Scanner reader equals new reader. And we're using system dot in. Okay, so that'll let us get input from the keyboard. Okay. And then I've mentioned this in previous videos, but just as a reminder, reader next line always returns a string, and we need to convert that to an integer because we're using integers. Okay, so um, now looking at this problem, again, we're going like one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's just do that part first. So while number is less than or equal to max, this is what we did before, number and we're just going to increment that plus plus. Okay. So if I did this, if I did system dot dot out dot print ln number, here's what we would get. Oops, got an error. Oops, not new reader. It's new scanner. So probably you guys figured that out before I did. But this is part of the process. You, you, people make mistakes. It's, doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. So this is good because we need that sequence. That's what the question is asking. We're going to take that sequence and then we're going to do something with it. So we're not printing it out like we did before. We're actually adding that to our sum. Now we can do it this way. Sum equals sum plus number. Okay, so sum is zero, number is one. So zero plus one is one. Add one to number. 1 plus 2 is 3, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I choose to do it this way just because it's a little shortcut. Plus equals number. And that's the equivalent of what I just did. And then once the loop is done, we need to print out what was the format? Um, sum is. Okay, so I go. So system dot out dot print. And we'll do print ln. Uh, quote sum is and then plus sum and let's run that and we'll try oops what did I do wrong 
Java line 20. Oh, where'd that come from? Run. Okay, so five. So I was 15. So one plus two is three, plus three is six, plus four is 10, plus five is 15. And we can test it with the values here. So let's do three since that's the one we're given. And once it's compiled, three, and we get the same result. Okay, so let's move on to the next question, uh, number 33. And this is sum between two numbers. So you can kind of see that these exercises are parallel to the ones we've previously did in the previous video. Um, so similar to the previous exercise, except the program should ask for both the lower and upper bound. So we're looking for first, last, and the sum of those numbers. Okay, so I'm just going to alter this program. So number is going to be our first. So it says, actually I'll change the order here a little bit. So it looks a little bit neater. Okay, so I'm going to say so system dot out dot print l l print, uh, and it says what does it say there? First and last. So first semicolon, and then we're going to say number equals integer dot parse int, and just the same thing we did before. Reader dot next line. Okay, so that's our number, and then change that to last because that's what we have there and so we've got number and max so while number is less than max everything else is the same okay so let's run that I'll check the numbers here so 3 and 5 so sum should be 12 3 5 sum is 12 so it started at 3 and 5 is 3 less than 5 yes so 0 plus 3 is 3 Add one, so four. Is four less than five? Yes, or less than or equal to five. So three plus four is seven. Go around, uh, and then now number is five. Uh, is five less than or equal to five? Yes, so seven plus five is 12. Number is six. Is six less than or equal to five? No, it's not. Program, well actually loop ends, and then we print out the sum, and that is that. Okay, moving on. Um, again, all of these ones in this section are basically very, very similar types of problems. So this one is a factorial. So a factorial is times. Okay, so the factorial n exclamation point is calculated using the formula 1 times 2 times 3 times blah, blah, blah to n. Now, if you remember up here, it's the same formula except we're using plus. Okay, so we're multiplying all the numbers. So I'm going to go back to here. Now, it's not asking me for first because it's starting at 1, so I don't need to do that. So I'm going to say number equals 1. Okay, And what does it ask for? It says type a number. Type a number. And then it says it's not a sum. We're looking for a factorial. I say factorial is yeah okay and so as I said we're not looking for sum we're looking for the factorial so let's change this so that it, it matches what we're doing and factorial and factorial okay now as I mentioned just now we're not using plus we're using times that's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, etc. So let's run that. Let's see if we've got any errors. Yep. Um, where we got an error? Oh, int number equals 1. Run that again. Okay, so I'm going to try 10. And the factorial is 0. So that's not very good. <laughs> um, times equals number. Why did it do that? Hmm. Let's go back and see what I did something wrong. Okay, that's correct. Oops. Which what should the answer be? Okay, that, that very big number down there. Uh, factorial times. Uh, hmm. Well, let's try this then. Let's try 
equals factor real times number. And run. Yeah. Try it one more time. If it doesn't work, then we'll go back to the drawing board. Okay. Why is it doing this? Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda go through this. Zero numbers mass factor factorial times number numbers zero integers. Number equals one. Ah, okay. <laughs> zero times anything is zero. That was that was pretty dumb. Okay, so I need to do because it's factorial. It's got to be a one because zero times anything is zero. All right, live and learn. Let's try that. And this is why we test our code. I'm gonna sometimes think things through. All right, and there we go. We've got basically two. So you can see here clearly it's one times two times three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, I had zero in the previous one. Interesting. Anyway, all right. So that is that one. And then we've got one more for this video. Um, number 35, sum of the powers. Okay. So now we're going back to summing. Okay. Now this is very interesting. Notice that we're not adding 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. We're adding 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2. So this type of sequence is what we need to deal with. Okay. And it's telling us here. We're going to use math.pow number power. And it's also telling us that we need to convert it to an int because math.pow returns a double. Okay, so I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to say, since we're doing sum again, I'll say sum. And we're starting with zero. And we're also starting with zero because it's going to be to the power. Okay, so. And we want to go up to a certain number. So we're using the exact same pattern that we used before. But what we want to do in this, this case is we want to say the sum plus equals. Okay, previously we did number. It's because we added 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Okay, but what we're doing in this case is we're adding int, as we said it's an integer, math.pow, and it is going to be 2 to the number. Okay, so 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2 plus 2 to the 3, etc, etc. And then how's the output going to be? Type a number, the result is. Okay, so type a number and the result is. Okay, so let's run that and see if we get any errors. Oops. Okay, so I didn't change that from factorial, so that's because we're looking for a sum here. Type a number, and let's go check out. So we know 3 should give us 15. So 3, and the result is 15. So there you go. That is that. Stay tuned for the next video.